Butler and Trevor, quick shot Henry to break down our last match where Fnatic defeated Rocket and coming in straight first week, uh, first game of Super Week and a Zix pick in the top lane. Joe, what did you make of it? Well, it was a surprise for I think everyone. I don't think I'm the only one that was surprised by that. Obviously, they first picked the Ziggs. And we thought, okay, just putting priority onto that one, a safe champion for that mid lane, got a bit of everything to work with, and Peckett, of course, has played brilliantly before. But then that last pick of the Oriana, and I completely think Rockout were just shocked by that one. They had no idea that that Ziggs was going to come in top lane. Yeah, I completely agree. And one of the reasons that I really like the last pick Oriana to make that a double AP comp is the fact that Rocket had no hard initiation. They had Zyra for peel. Their initiation was a speed booster Jax to run in. When you add the zone control, the poke and the range that an Oriana and a Ziggs offer you, and you add Thresh into the mix with flays and boxes, there was no ways Rocket were ever going to make it to Fnatic if they played it well. And they did, so they won all the team fights. Yeah, and you were talking about the team fights, but let's take a look at how it came to the fact that Fnatic was stronger in team fights as well, is they just dominated the early game. Yeah, I really feel like Rocket mechanically are struggling to keep up in all of their lanes. Um, in the top lane, Zaz has kept up with Soaz, which was surprising uh, in the matchup. But Overpal fell behind Peke, who got a new record for 300 CS uh, in the LCS at 21.52. In the bottom lane, Silva again falling behind his lane opponents. They were already at a disadvantage going to team fights because they simply didn't have the resources available. And that's the funny thing because Rocket actually, if you look at the statistics, have gone a little bit better when it comes to farming, especially overpowering the mid lane from almost at the bottom of mid lane to getting up there into the top four. And it just shows that it's not really enough against a farm heavy champion like Oriana, who, all right. Apparently Peke, by the way, didn't realize that he was going for a CS record. And we also have to say that Zyra's plants always help out. Absolutely. It did look like he was going for it, actually. But um, as you mentioned, not the best team comp to fight from the side of Rocket. Then we saw they try to go for something special, a flank. We're actually going to watch a, a replay from maybe a last ditch effort. We're going to bring that up on the screen right now. They said, we're going to try and flank him and get them that way. Yeah, you're 100% right. This is Rock, uh, Rocket trying to jump on Fnatic. If you look at the minimap, Soez is nowhere near. He does have a Mega Inferno Bomb from range, which is always going to help. But roll this clip out. And the main thing to just keep note of is how decisive Yellowstar is with the flays, with the box. Um, you know, landing a key death sentence onto Overpower. And the only sort of CC that Rocket have to really lock people down was Stranglethorns. But it was too late from Vanda. And after they throw everything in the kitchen sink at Fnatic, Fnatic shrug it off and turn it around. They chase Rocket down. Now, unfortunately, Fnatic's team comp is a reactive one. So because they blew all of their CC defending themselves, they didn't necessarily have enough to get the kills, but that was a team fight that they did so often. And I'm just blown away at how great Fnatic's control was in that game. Yeah, and that was the problem with that one as well. We saw how well they can control, even without Soaz in there, even without the uh, bouncing bomb damage. Yeah, he got his ultimate in there, which was kind of the turn around and run point for Rocket once they saw that coming in. There were no kills for Fnatic, but you just saw that even Peke, who they did lock up as one of the only ones that they locked up, they still weren't able to finish him off. And if you can't finish that one guy, the rest of the team is just going to push you back with those ultimates. Uh, final question. We talked to Soaz just a second ago, and um, he said it himself. I like this meta a lot more. How key do you think that factor is to Fnatic going forward? Oh, a massive factor. I mean, you go back to the spring split, their losing streak. Soaz took a lot of the, the hits personally. He struggled. I think a top lane Ziggs will work against some teams. Had he been punished more or focused more by a more decisive Rocket or Rocket with an engaged support, you may not get away with that same pick. So it's something that can work, but whether or not it'll work in playoffs or something more uh, important is another question altogether. But that's the thing about Soaz, right? We've already seen that if he's not enjoying how the game is supposed to be played right now, then he doesn't play well. That, that whole slump that Fnatic had where we saw Soaz, you know, at the end of his tether almost, where it seemed like this is a guy who looks like he could end up, you know, hanging up his mouse and keyboard at any point because he was just not seemingly having fun with the game. I think this... The fact that he can play AP Champions top lane and play without teleport here today, which is something we're quite vocal about, that's going to help him, you know, get to the highest level and even progress past that. I completely agree. I love the analogy of hanging up a mouse and keyboard, though I do think it's a bit weird. Yeah. You do I was going to say joke. boots, but I realized <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. Just taking a depressing turn. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. We're going to send it back over to Demon and the Fisio as the LCS 